This is the Mind Body Detox Podcast, where we discuss all things integrative health and wellness, interviewing folks from all over the world, sharing insights and wisdom on how to live a healthier life in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome back to the Mind Body Detox Podcast. I am here with some wonderful, wonderful, amazing guests. April Johnson and Tanya Jarrett. And we're going to be discussing today uh, the environmental working groups list called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And I am really excited to talk about this with these two ladies because I think think it's a really good um, bit of information to really start or enhance your health journey. So Tanya, Tell us a little bit about yourself and what the environmental working group is. What is their mission? Who are they and uh, what are they doing? Thanks so much for having me, Kara. This is so exciting. So I'm Tanya Jarrett and I am a nutritional therapist and also a board certified health and wellness coach. Um, And the environmental working group. So today we're really talking about not only the EWG, but some amazing things that they do, like the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, but the Environmental Working Group is this beautiful team of scientists and lawyers and people who are amazing in data and policy. And what they do is they work their little booties off for us to um, really reform laws and to ensure that um, they're standing up for the public health of the population. And their mission is really simple. Their mission is really to empower people to make informed choices and live a healthy life in an amazingly healthy environment as much as it could be. So it's, it's really fantastic that there's an organization out there that is doing all of this wonderful work to empower us as the consumers to make informed choices. It's awesome. It's really, it really is amazing. They're like earth angels, like really literally doing all the work, but are they global or is it national or do you know about what scale are they working on? So it is on a national scale. So they basically take, um, they basically take all of the research information from our government agencies. And I, I mean, I'm only, I'm saying that they're national only because they do take information from like the USDA and the FDA. I do not think that they cross um, country, country lines. So um, yeah, they take this information from the USDA and the FDA and they compile it into information that consumers can understand which is, which is really cool because that's telling me right there that our own government is not even protecting us as consumers. Mm. So other than like, I know their, their studies and the compiling the research, and we're going to talk about the dirty dozen, the clean 15. Are there anything, anything else like sort of services or resources that they have that are available that are really helpful and how to navigate looking for those? Yeah. There is a lot. So if you ever go to their website, which is ewg.org, you'll see that they have multiple areas of focus. So it's like toxic chemicals and personal products and family health, household products, even down to um, food and water and farming and agriculture. It, I mean, it's, it's really comprehensive and I mean, it's fantastic. They have the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15, but then they have these databases where you can look up, you know, how clean your products are and is your water safe? That's power. I love it. I really love it. I wish I could take every single person that works for that organization and do something special for them. I think what you're doing now, just educating people about it, because I think you guys are also doing your work as nutrition angels on this planet, because I think that we all have something to do to help the population, the community, our world. And of course they're doing the the toxic chemical research work, but um, I think you're doing enough for that because I think when I was um, new to this, it was amazing, like the wake up call and it was very empowering. So um, I'm excited to have April introduce what the Dirty Dozen is, especially for the yearly guide. It's 
it changes every year. So April, tell us a little bit about that and introduce yourself, of course, first. Tell us who you are. <laughs> sure. I'm April Johnson and I'm a applied functional medicine survey practitioner, functional medicine health coach, and an integrative nutrition health coach. And I'm very passionate about helping women identify the root causes of their health issues. And yeah, let's talk a little bit about the yearly uh, Dirty Dozen Clean 15 list. So yes, this actually does come out every year. It's get updated. And this list is something that I actually refer to every single one of my clients um, because unfortunately the produce that is being um, conventionally raised is heavily sprayed. And we're talking like your strawberries, your apples, um, even some of like your kale was, I think one of the newest ones that actually was put on the list was kind of crazy to me. Um, but it's a really great guide for you to follow if you really wanna go to um, more of a clean eating. But it also helps too um, for people who can't necessarily always buy organic everything. Um, they can um, you know, go off the clean 15 list, which is things that you can buy non-organic because it's not so heavily sprayed. So it's a very great, wonderful guide for, again, to stay, like follow clean eating, but then like on a budget, because a lot of people do have to like, you know, watch how much they spend. And so, yeah, that, so yeah, that comes out every year and um, it's an amazing guide. So I, I totally refer it to my clients. April, I love how you're talking about clean eating. <laughs> When I was new to my health journey, when I had someone say clean eating to me, I was like, okay, so I'm going to eat all fruits and vegetables and like get rid of like meats. Like I had this like idea of what clean eating is. So I think it's really, really cool to have this almost like a next level of using the dirty dozen clean 15 to really start to clean up the diet a little bit more. You're talking about getting rid of these toxins, these pesticides and things that are on the vegetables and the fruit. Um, well, the Dirty Dozen Clean 15 that comes out every year, we're going to give you guys the, in the show notes, the website to go and look at that and, and download that as well. But I want to ask Tanya a little bit more about how that information is compiled. Like how do they come up with that Dirty Dozen Clean 15 every year? Yep. So going back to um, the samples that, so the, the USDA and the FDA, they do an analysis on fruits and vegetables. They take samples and they, they analyze the pesticide contamination, but then nothing's really done with that information. So what happens is the environmental working group comes in, they sweep in like the angels they are, and they take that information and they're able to put it into consumer friendly, um, consumer friendly lists. And I think they use don't quote me on this. You can look on the website, but I think it's the top 45 most popular fruits and vegetables. So they, they really, there's a specific number of, you know, fruits and vegetables that they look at and then they compile the information on those specific fruits and vegetables. And what's, what blows my mind from a nutrition perspective is that scientists know that when there's two or more pesticides, the combination of them can be more potent than pesticides individually. Mm. So there, right there tells you that there's so many inadequacies in our food system. And it's no wonder that um, other countries have banned these toxic pesticides, but for some reason here in the U.S., they're still allowed. There's just there's just a lot of gaps that need to be filled in still. And um, the EWG works pretty darn hard to, um, you know, let us know where those gaps are so that we can make good decisions. Mm. So for the consumers, the information is going to be give, giving us more empowerment to, to eat better, to eat cleaner. How, how does that affect, um, how does that affect us on um, like when we are not eating the dirty dozen and the clean 15? Um, I'm curious a little bit about um, that. We're, we're looking at the FDA and um, what you were saying about they compile the information, but they don't really do anything with it. So I'm, I'm curious, like, how do we get to this position where we know it's harmful for us versus not harmful? Like how, how does that work? Cause I know, um, 
April was going to talk about the FDA and grass, which is generally regarded as safe. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really safe when the FDA says it's grass? <laughs> That's, uh, hey, April, you go ahead on that one, sister. <laughs> um, no, not really. And that means, honestly, I it's like not really tested. And, you know, what they generally recognize as safe, you know, maybe in small amounts too, which could, you know, but unfortunately, if, if we're eating, like continuously eating food that has a lot amount, like a huge amount of pesticides or insecticides on it, um, that's not a minuscule amount. And even in our water, that's not a little amount. And unfortunately it's, it's just not very well regulated. Even um, food colorings, yes. food colorings, yes. like, Oh, a little bit of red 40 won't hurt you, but that is yeah. everything. Maybe yeah. it's safe in little bits, but yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. That's the problem. <laughs> you were, so you were talking about how this can contribute to our hormones and disrupting all of that. And that's a big, I think that's a really big mess. I don't think we're really fully aware unless we are somewhat into some sort of healthcare, either background or we've di dive into it a lot, or we've had particular issues with our own hormones. I don't think we actually look at it until it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about, about hormone disruptors and pesticides and how that contributes to issues in yeah. male, male and female? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the chemicals that are being used, um, the ingredients in those, the, the insecticides, pesticides, even glyphosate, they contain endocrine disrupting chemicals. And what that will do is actually disrupt our hormones. It can either you know, deplete them, it can mimic them, it can uh, create extras. Uh, this is something that I actually see a lot in, even in my female clients who are dealing with like estrogen dominance per se or PCOS. Um, because they are taking in all these azinoestrogens and it's not just from food, but we're talking products that we're putting on our skin. Um, our skin is um, a big giant mouth. That's what it, they taught in my school. Like everything that we put on it, it like literally it soaks in and goes into your bloodstream. Um, things that we were using, you know, washing with our hair and um, even our household products, sunscreens, things like that. They are containing all of this excess estrogen and it is really screwing up hormones and it's creating hormone imbalances, which is uh, creating a huge problem, not only in women, but we're also now seeing this in men. So you said two words there that popped out at me, xenoestrogens. So xenoestrogen, of course, I think about like, you remember the princess Xena, like in the nineties show, like, <laughs> like I think xenoestrogens, like I know it's xenoestrogens, but I always think Zeno. of like princess Xena. I think it's not even spelled the same way, but that's what I think about. So can you tell everyone what xenoestrogens are in case they've heard, not, have never heard of that, that term before? Well, the xenoestrogens are going to be all of the um, endocrine disrupting chemicals that are in those products. Um, like the, you know, not only in the food, but like in a lot of the cosmetics, um, in the hair care products. So they're like uh, so mimicking the, estrogen, yes. basically? That's, yes. okay, so they're like almost similar in, collect, in the molecular structure? Yeah, so they can actually mimic, but they can also create other imbalances as, as in depleting them as well. So um, unfortunately, yeah, there's this, just those xenoestrogens are in a lot of those products. And when um, women are, you know, lathering themselves in it or, you know, using a lot of them, it is actually impacting their hormones and creating more estrogen, which can create a really big issue. Oh, yeah. Super, yeah. super emotional cry at everything. Like, and I'm sure like a lot of other things, but I know that that like, for me, I know when my estrogen levels high, I'm like super emotional about things, <laughs> but you were talking about lathering things all over your body that have chemicals that your, your skin is like a mouth and you're absorbing it. I was remembering back in the nineties, I got this sugar scrub wax. And I remember it was one of those things that was like a infomercial, like this thing is so natural. You can eat it. And like, I, that was like one of the first times that concept of not putting something in your body unless you could eat it was like introduced to me in the nineties. And um, I feel like it still isn't very 
commonly known, maybe more mm-hmm. so now, but I just was thinking about that, like lathering on this sugar scrub. And I was like, yeah. And then I'm like licking it off the, the <laughs> left, the, the popsicle, the huge popsicle stick. I'm like, this, you can, you can eat this. Yes. Um, but anyway, um, you, you're talking also about glyphosate. Okay. Yeah. Glyphosate. Can you tell us what glyphosate is? Sure. So glyphosate is the active ingredient. Oh, glyphosate. Am I saying it wrong? Glyphosate. Well, glyphosate, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think there's okay, I want to make sure ways. that I'm saying it right because I've, <laughs> I've read the word, but I've never said it out loud. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's how it's pronounced, but it is the active ingredient in Roundup. And that is what's, you know, being used not only on the big agricultural fields, um, like for the GMO crops that are being raised, but also um, that's being used to spray, you know, for weeds around your home. Mm-hmm. And um, this ingredient is um, endocrine disrupting, but also has been now shown to be causing non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a ingredient that I would like literally like stay away from. Yeah. I, I want to ask you this question, but we're not going to answer it because I think we need to do this in another podcast. But I have to say, because my monkey mind's in this whole thing with glyphosate, 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 you know what it is, right? (laughs) um, I was, I was very well, so I have a gluten sensitivity, but I'm not celiac. So I had a really interesting thought of connection with, they spray so much of the wheat with glyphosate, glyphosate, Mm glyphosate, yes, all right, with the Roundup stuff. And Mm -hmm. I was... I got imported organic French bread to make sweet, to make, to make, um, French toast. I was like, I wonder if I could eat organic bread that's non GMO and not sprayed, you know, whatever. And honestly, I didn't really have an issue with it. So I would love to talk more about this in the gut health and talking about this connection, because I think there are people out there that this may be a theory that maybe it's just the glyphosate. Yeah, I'm saying it right. Anyway, yeah. I just wanted to put that in there because that'd be a really cool topic to to go into in another podcast. So would be. Yeah. That that would that's gonna be a really good one to go in yes. depth. Yeah. <laughs> there's just so much to learn. And it's yeah, there's so much, there's just so much to learn. <laughs> well, especially with chemicals and stuff. So you guys are speaking to the uh the queen of knowing when chemicals are in things because I'm super sensitive and I know a lot of our listeners are as well. So I think, you know, and even if people aren't aware that they are this awareness that maybe there is something that is affecting their hormones or these things that they're eating. So I think this is really great um, to share this information. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about metabolic syndrome and some of the chemicals that are contributing to obesity and like Tanya, just, just riff on that because I think that's a really interesting thought. Like, are you gaining weight because of toxins? Like, how is that affecting our metabolism and our and contributing to metabolic syndrome and, and diabetes and all that? Yeah. So, I, I mean, just listening to April, you know, use these big words like glyphosate and, you know, exedogens and all that. Um, it's, it's so crazy to just step back and think about how incredibly toxic our world is. Mm -hmm. So it also depends whether you live rural or whether you live in a city or, you know, urban rural, or whether um, you drink well water or city water, or, you know, what your home environment's like, do you have, you know, do you have poor soil in your area? What about that? You know, going back to that perfume you're using, the food you're eating. And, you know, in my mom's generation, so she was born in the fifties. I mean, to her, it's like, oh, I've been using that for years. There's no way it could make you sick. Um, but there's been such an incredible shift in the past, gosh, I want to say 25 years. And the awareness of toxins is, is profound because, Toxins are fat soluble. Okay. So they are incredibly attracted to your fat cells and these toxins over the years are just building up inside of your body, building up, building up, building up. And we call these obesogens. Okay. So we refer to these as obesogens and they create the perfect cascade for metabolic damage. 
and metabolic syndrome, which uh, for those who are not familiar with metabolic syndrome, this is like a cluster of conditions. So think um, high blood pressure, um, high blood sugar, um, excessive fat around the waistline, um, abnormal cholesterol levels, you think triglycerides and your LDL. So if you have a cluster of those conditions, we tend to say that you have metabolic syndrome. And, and as a practitioner, a lot of the clients that I see fall into this category and they're saying, well, wait, wait, well, hold on a second. Why can't I lose weight? And this could possibly be the reason why you cannot shed that weight is because these obesogenic compounds, these toxins that accumulate over the years are making your fat cells grow bigger and bigger. And guess what they're also doing? They're also damaging your mitochondria and your mitochondria are the powerhouse of your cells that produce energy. So it, it just really creates this perfect storm for diabetes and um, heart disease and obesity. It's really crazy how it's interconnected, but it's so, so empowering once you know it, because you could be aware. Mm-hmm. I know that we have an upcoming podcast with you ladies. that's going to be talking about ditching the diet mentality. And I have a feeling <laughs> we're going to go a lot deeper into this. So um, I want to talk to April about um, eating fresh, eating local, eating organic, but also to mention on what Tanya just said there, you guys, I was 260 pounds. I lost over hundred pounds, not even from exercising, just changing my diet alone and getting rid of these toxins. So mm-hmm. I'm mean, like, yeah, case studies aren't always like, you know, correlation is equal causation scientifically, but I really am looking forward to hearing more of the research and the information about the connection to the, um, obesogens and obesity and metabolic syndrome, Tanya, that is gold, gold information. I think a lot of us need to know, especially for trying Mm -hmm. to lose weight. And I know you have a lot more information as well. The um, metabolic balance program that you run at Firefly Hollow is also another thing. If you guys are interested in one, check that out now, go to Firefly Hollow website if you can't wait for that that podcast. But um, April, tell us a little bit about Local market, CSA, how do you access organic foods? What, what is the best way for doing that? Yeah, so, you know, the best way to do that is to scope out what's out in your area. Um, there is, I think, a lot more um, farmers out there that are doing things, what I would say, the right way, which is um, growing, um, you know, or more organic food also raising animals in a humane way and more like grass uh, fed versus feed. Um, And um, there's like a lot of them are doing the CSAs where you can sign up and you can receive, um, I guess, depending on what their programs are, but you can actually get a really great amount of really fresh organic food throughout the summer. Um, But if you are looking for like a, a really big, great, like a really great resource that I do tell my clients, if, you're like not being able to find something in your area, go to localharvest.org and put in your address, put in your zip code, and it will actually pull up all of these wonderful uh, places that you can go and get food. We have farmer markets, CSAs. Um, I think they even have restaurants and stuff like that. They do farm to table, but um, it's a really great resource to help you um, connect with someone that you can get food um, that's cleaner and more organic. So we got Pinterest boards. We're going to share with you guys in the show notes related to this, how to get to your local harvest.org. We're going to give you that, that as well. And, um, yeah, honestly, I would recommend totally going and getting gra- pasture grass fed beef from a local farmer, mm-hmm. any sort of meat, if you guys have access and have a big humongous storage freezer, like yeah. it's so <laughs> worth it. It really is. It's so worth it. The, it just the it. taste alone of high quality, you know, meats, high quality pro animal proteins. It, it doesn't compare to mm-hmm. conventional. It is the taste is phenomenal. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. No, I, I totally agree with that. And, and I actually get all of my meat locally. I, I connect with my farmers and that's another thing that you can do too. When you actually connect with farmers, please have a conversation with them. Um, and, and ask how they take care of their animals or how they raise their crops. I think that's a really important conversation to have. 
Um, but I do that out here with all of the farmers that I connect with. Mm -hmm. And um, I have multiple freezers <laughs> that is full of um, frozen meat. So, yeah. So if I connect with my local farmer, just real basic, what questions will I ask about how they raise? Like what well, would be the common things to ask them? Yeah. What are the I mean, right answers, so to speak? What am I looking for that the right answers? Like, yes, that's what I want. You know, for, for me personally, like I don't really want animals that have had any feed. Um, unless, unless some, some do at towards the end, they do like the grains and the feed to, you know, kind of push the, the weight thing and, and that if it's organic, I don't mind it so much, but for me personally, like, I just want to know, is this like being raised, like it's on the, on the grass? Like, is that all this, the cow is eating? Is that with the pig? Like, um, same with the chickens, like mm -hmm. that's what matters to me. So you know, like I said, all farmers do things differently, but if you're not a, you know, you don't care that they do the grain at the end, then that's okay. You know, as long as it's organic, then sure. Um, but those are like the big things that I ask when I meet with a farmer. Thank you. That's really good to know. Thank you very, very much. All right. So how do we access this guide and we get to connect it to the EWG? Because I know there's some other cool things, Tanya, that they have that might be very fun to look at. Yes. So they do also have an app and I'm going to encourage everybody listening to this podcast to go ahead and download that app. It is so valuable. But if you just go to ewg.org, there is a plethora of information where you can go down the rabbit hole and truly get lost into all of the wonderful um, guides, consumer guides that they have, and, you know, all of the wonderful tools that they have that you can use to enhance your health journey. Cool. I'm excited yeah. to download it because I don't have that one yet. <laughs> cool. So ladies, I have two final questions for you. These are the final questions I ask everyone their first round on the podcast with us. So you probably will only have to ask them once. Well, maybe six times to run down the road, we'll ask you again if anything's changed. So the first question is, I'm going to ask April first and then Tanya for the first question. What are you completely obsessed about right now in the health arena? Right now, considering that it is warmer and it is, you know, spring to now approaching summer, I am big on being outside and connecting with nature putting my hands in the dirt um, as, as I'm, you know, planting my plants in the garden, um, getting the uh, natural sunlight so I can get my vitamin D. So, uh, and, and grounding, you know, that's, that's really what it's about for me. So that's where I'm at right now in my phase. Mm. I love it. It's like perfect time as well right now. Yes. And even with the change, when we get these hot summer days and then the thunderstorms come in and like the air, mm -hmm. the way the air feels, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I can totally see why you're obsessed with that <laughs> right now. <laughs> Tanya, what are you completely obsessed, right, obsessed with right now in the health arena? Okay. So since we're talking about the EWG, um, I shared this with April recently. We were having a conversation about how it's so hard to find high quality shampoo and conditioner that doesn't break the bank. And Herbal Essence has this line and it's called their Bio Renew line. I actually have it in my hand right now because I brought it down, but it is EWG verified. That is like, I just want to clap for them because it is so affordable First yes. of all, it's yes. six dollars, mm. you know, per bottle. So you're spending twelve dollars for high quality shampoo and conditioner that is like no parabens, no sulfates, no dyes, no junk, and EWG verified. Oh. It doesn't get better than that. And if you've ever used herbal essence, and I know many of the listeners out there have, the smell mm. is incredible. So it's like you just want to like kind of gnaw on your hair after you wash it because it smells so good. I am sure so glad. Make husbands or boyfriends use it or girlfriends because you want to be by them even more. As you find more products Great. like that that have the EWG certified label, like I want to know, especially things like that. That's amazing. I, yeah. I love that. Well, and the final question for you ladies 
April here. If you could detox the world right now from anything, what would it be? Oh, judgment. Stop judging others. That's literally like, it is so intense right now. And I would like, I would love to detox the world from that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. There's a really good book that um, I know that everyone finds their own way or their own method of getting judgment out of their lives, especially self-judgment as well as judgment others. But Judgment Detox by Gabrielle Bernstein is a really, really nice book. For it's a that. great book. I yeah. have that one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. You just hold that one up for the world, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Tanya, if you could detox the world right now from anything, what would it be? Yeah, this is, this is a good one. So this is a really good question. <laughs> um, I think if I could, if I could take something away and that it would possibly be like adding in too, but taking away the six foot distancing and putting back in lots of hugs because people who know me personally know that that is a, a very um, personal way that I connect with people. I love to hug people. I love physical touch. I, I just think connection is so important and it is one of, you know, one of the, the ground factors that we all need is, is human touch. So mm-hmm. let's add in some more hugs, take away the, the six foot distancing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Love it. I'm, I'm a <laughs> hugger as well. And I'm of course a professional toucher, a massage therapist, <laughs> right? I'm a professional. Toucher. So I think like just seeing the need for so many people right now, how much they're craving that even just in, in, a, in a, a professional setting for massage, like we need that. Um, there are professional cuddlers. Did you know this? There are. You can be a baby cuddler. Yes. A wonderful job. Yes. 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 Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. So from from all of us here at the Mind Body Detox podcast, Tanya Jarrett and April Johnson, we're all sending you guys great big virtual hugs um, until we can see you guys next time. So thank you ladies so much for joining us and be well, my friends, till we see you next time. listening to the mind body detox podcast we wish you wellness and health in your mind body and spirit and be well until next time my friends